So we all know that, you know, apart from foundation, we have multiple modules in finance. What we have completed till now is the basic configurations. Uh, like I have kept a structure in front of you guys earlier also. Lejo and Shabir, you just proceed with this as of today. If you have any queries related to today's discussion, then you can read. Otherwise, you simply keep going with this explanation. So here's the basics. What we have covered in finance. Then we would like to proceed for multiple modules in our upcoming sessions, wherein GLAP, AR, this will come into this structure. All these basic configurations are very important. And if you forget any one configuration point, you may have issues in these modules, whether in the form of, you know, posting, you'll get tickets or errors, okay, or at the time of creation of master data, you'll get the messages. Or you'll not be able to post the transaction. Why? Because you forgot to create the number ranges for those documents. Okay. So please, don't forget that BC configuration or enterprise configuration, like these are those customizations or setup points mandatory to proceed further for module implementation. So after this basic configuration, you can call it as basic configuration or enterprise components, I told you on that day. Uh, these are nearly 22 or 23 points, okay, mandatory to configure. Now, our first target is general ledger. I gave you a small idea about general ledger module, but this is nothing but a hurt of accounting, or you can call it as hub of accounting. Or another point, what I told you here is uh, general ledger department, whenever they prepare report, this is used for external accounting and which reports all business transaction in SAP system. No matter wherever you are posting the transaction, if it is related to finance, it has to be in general ledger. Okay. Basically what happens, SAP system is fully integrated with other operational areas of a company. Okay. And it must ensure that it has collected all accounting data from various accounting platforms. Like, let me keep circle here. Yeah. I'm keeping up general ledger here. What I said, this is a herd of accounting or hub of accounts. Whatever you post, it must come here. No matter you are working on accounts payable or accounts receivable, or asset accounting, okay, or any other areas like SPM or control, right? It has to come up here. That means this department must ensure that all data which were posted in other operational areas is collected for reporting purpose. Now this happens only with proper integration. You know what is the integration? It's nothing but putting a link of all these modules to one spot. Not this, this is head office. Okay, hub of accounts, I said. Now, as today, while talking to these two guys who have newly joined our group, that Lejo and Shabir, I told them, you know, when you are purchasing something, purchase account got evicted, and your vendor, a specific vendor name, I'm not writing any name here, but I'm mentioning it as a vendor. So this is actually two line items, you know. This is the language what we use. What's this? This is a document. A document is nothing but a transaction or posting. So one document got two line items. Now, basically, if you think this entry belongs to accounts payable, then how this entry falls in general ledger? Because whatever you post in vendor, that will get updated in secondary credit. Correct? Now, Sunday Creditor will also get updated. Why? Now, what's Sunday Creditor here? It's a reconciliation account. It's a general ledger account. Whatever is posted in vendor, that will get indirectly updated if you assign Sunday Creditor to 
all vendors. Now this is your general ledger. Now what happens whenever you have posted an invoice, automatically your balance sheet is getting updated. Why balance sheet? Sunday credit are is a balance sheet item. Hope you got it. Is any confusions here? Any confusion I'm, still now? I'm clear. Okay, fine. So, general lecture introduction you have very much clear. Now, proceeding further for departmental explanation of all these points and how it works exactly. Let me put them here. Imagine you have got a responsibility to implement general ledger module. What I said, this is a process you can also call R2R, record to a report process. Whatever they record, they present to the management. Just now, a min uh, two minutes back, I told you a few points that no matter wherever these accounting data is getting posted, it must be integrated with general ledger so that you have accurate data of the accounting. If you are missing something, that means your report is not up to the mark. Okay. Now, the guys who are working here is known as R2R accountant or general ledger accountant. Basically, they are expert in journal entry and month and adjustment postings and all. And these guys are having day-to-day -day tasks. They are only they are not only responsible to post day-to-day -day transactions, but also some specific adjustments or month and jobs also. Now if you are a consultant, if you are working on implementation of general ledger module in SAP, that means you must be aware that how this department works, how they work on day-to-day tasks, and what are their special duties, what are their, you know, the, you know, upcoming every month they have consequences or typical processes or Sometimes these accountants are in a dilemma, like, you know, they are not able to decide whether to proceed to post this transaction or not to proceed. Why? Because sometimes they are authorized, sometimes they are not authorized to post that transaction. Okay. Now, how to start, how to initiate? Now, in yesterday's discussion with Lejo and Shabir, in earlier discussion, all of you guys, like Malia, Rajesh, and, you know, Hari, I already informed that you being a consultant must be aware of this process. Then only you can give the solution in an application. If you are not aware that how this department works then how you are going to prescribe a solution for them. Correct? So let's see what are those areas which you have to you know concentrate at the time of implementation. Now let me take few points here which are regular in nature for these guys. Now, first they have to know how to deal with ledgers. What does it mean that dealing with ledgers here? Okay. The meaning of dealing with ledgers is they must know how to create ledgers. Okay. All these jobs are end user jobs. So until unless you know how to do this, you are not going to train your end user. Correct? So they must know how to create ledger, okay, how to change ledger, how to display ledger, okay, how to block ledger, how to delete. You can only set as delete option. You can set a flag as a delete option. That doesn't mean that you can remove ledger after posting. Remember that. So you know how to delete. Okay, you know how to search. So these are all, you know, the master data maintenance responsibility. You see, there is a separate process in consulting known as MDM, master data maintenance, or master data governance. Remember this, MDG. Basically, all these jobs will be taken up and given to the MDG guy. And these are not even belongs to end user responsibility, but again, it depends on budget of the company, whether they are willing to train their users to look after all these roles individually or they are not going to trust users why because you know accounting department is mostly known for you know frauds 
yeah, a kind of fraud jobs. You know, uh, the voucher doesn't exist. They'll post the transaction and they'll keep $500 in their pocket. I've seen that. I've been into multiple audits in Dubai and I've seen many vouchers which are not physically presented uh, to the auditors, but the entry exists in a system. So how to believe? Do you, do you have any choice if you are an auditor for such case? Will you justify yourself or will you accept that transaction? Yes, will you accept that transaction if there is no physical voucher presented for audit? Only a smart transaction got updated in a system, but there is no voucher. There is no proof available in a physical file. Will you accept that? No. Right? You are not going to accept that. So all these jobs belongs to end user or an MDG guy. So when you are implementing it, okay, make sure that you know you must be aware of ledgers. All these jobs in ledger responsibility. Now you must know how to create, how to cheat. See, if there is no ledger, you have to create. If there is a ledger, if they need to change, yes, they can change. If there is a ledger, okay, but confusion, like, you know, whether I have created salary in indirect expenses or direct expenses. If you have created salary in indirect expenses, then that is correct. If you have created salary in direct expenses, then that's wrong. Why? Because your gross profit figure is not going to be an accurate figure. Got it? Now, block in the sense, sometimes, you know, that expense has been created for a specific process, specific project, specific site for a construction. But now, that project is completed. Do you still want to use that expenses? No, you can block. Or you can set delete as a process. Block for posting, delete flag also. Okay. Now if you want, you can search. So all these jobs must be aware by a consultant. Then only he can train to it and end user. So this is one of the core activities which this department accountants are going to use in their day to day jobs. Is it clear the first point? Okay. So proceeding further to the next point is now posting of transaction. Posting of transaction is the second row. That means if they are having ledgers, yes, they are ready to post the transaction. For example, I got two ledgers. One is rent, another one is bank. Okay. So my debit and credit is ready to be get posted. Correct? But remember, I have started this module after basic configuration. This doesn't mean that you can open SAP and start creating ledgers and posting a transaction. No, you can't. Okay. So, after basic configuration, your first role is to go for uh, ledger creation. Yes. When ledgers are ready, yes, you can post the transaction. When transaction got posted, immediately reports are ready. What is this report? What is report and what you are going to do with reports? Any idea? Yes. Any idea what you are going to do with the reports? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I can come up on my and tell me what is the use of... I'm sorry? Uh, we can find the, with the helping of the reports, we can find out the uh, position of a company in our name. Mm -hmm. no. Basically, you are talking about one report, one statement that is balance sheet, if I am not wrong. If I ask you what is balance sheet, you may say that, you know, which shows financial position of a company. Even that definition for author is correct, but in reality that is wrong. The summarization to management? Okay, submission, of course, uh, you are going to put in front of them, but what are you going to do out of that? It's a kind of analysis, right? Yes. Analysis of, analysis of financial reports. That means, if a particular ledger is kept in front of the management, like let's say salary. Now, is that every month salary ledger is saved? No, right? The salary, the amount of 
salary what you paid in the month of January is not going to same in the month of February. Maybe some cut-offs, maybe some you know additions into the service, right? So when a ledger is kept in front of management, what's their job? They are going to analyze. Okay, they are going to analyze. They are going to inspect. They are going to examine that how it's moving up. What's the quality of the account? Correct. Why do you go to, through the reports to check the quality of accounting which is done by the department, correct? So, this is a day-to-day -day task for these guys. And this doesn't mean that the life of the general ledger accountant is so easy in the business, correct? Okay, so these are day-to-day -day jobs. And dealing with ledgers, posting, reports, day-to-day -day tasks, and it's quite easy for them. But as I told you, that every day is not same in accounting department. Sometimes challenges, sometimes, you know, unable to decide whether to proceed further or whether to, you know, proceed to the management directly in this particular case. Right? Sometimes typical entries, sometimes typical events. Events are nothing but transactions. Now, these accountants are unable to, you know, judge themselves that, you know, whether I must take a step or step back. Okay, no. So, let's talk about few, you know, circumstances where these people used to, you know, step back. If they are not authorized, if they are not permitted. Okay, now what it is exactly? Let me change the colors so that you, you can see multiple cases. In that, the first part which SAP has suggested and supported in this case is nothing but, you know, parking of documents. Parking of documents. This is one of the features which has been given by SAP. Why? See, first of all, parking of a document. What's document here? I told you initially, right? What's the meaning of document? Remember, the word which I'm using in my explanation every time, document is nothing but a transaction. One transaction, one document. One posting. One event. Okay. So, if I am posting the rent account debit to bank account, that's my document. Okay. Basically, document is nothing but your poster. Now, parking of document, this type of document is for internal purpose. First reason to park a document. And parking is temporary, not permanent. Remember this. Parking of document is temporary, not permanent. Why temporary? Because it's an internal document and authorization is required. Lack of authorization, user can only park a document. User is not authorized to post a document. See, parking, posting, both are different. Parking means temporarily you have stored a document and you are waiting for an approval from an authorized guy. See, I'm an accountant of the company. I have been asked to prepare a check of 5 lakhs. Okay. I have kept the name of the person to whom it should get paid, the date, the amount, everything I have kept. Now, should I sign that on the voucher? I mean, should I sign on that check? Is that AMA authorized to sign that company's check? No. I need an authorized signatory to proceed for that job. Correct? So, here also, parking of documents is a feature in SAP which is used when a junior or executive or associate accountant have got a voucher or a document which is beyond the limit. Beyond the limit in the sense, suppose, let me take one example here. A petty cashier. Petty cashier. Okay. Uh, Malia, I think you are in your village or town. Please mute yourself. Huh? I can hear some chicks are shouting in <laughs> the background. Huh? So let's not disturb the entire team. Huh? Now, petty cashier. You know the limit of petty cashier is not more than 10 to 15,000. Right? Imagine if any employee has opposed him and is informing that today I am traveling to some other branch, like from, you know, Bangalore to Delhi, and he, I need some transportation charges or traveling expenses. 
No, what he has requested that please give me some 25,000 cash. Okay. Now what happens? Is this a responsibility of a petty cash to release 25,000 cash? No. So what he will do? He will simply take the debit as a travelling expenses as debit. It is debited with 25,000. And what he will do? He will simply write down a bank or a cash, whatever is the mode of payment. Bank or cash is credited. And this entry is part. What he will do? As a petty cashier, he has recorded this document and forwarded for approval. Now, a senior cashier who is known as ATM all time money guy. So whatever cash you want, you just inform him, he will arrange that cash <coughs> with a genuine reason. Huh? So he will approve that. Or go for approval. And he will post that the document. Either he will give him an approval so that he can post himself if he is authorized user, or else if he himself will post that into the system. Okay. Now, you as a consultant, when you are working on this department and you come across with this, now after implementation, what are the basic configuration you need, everything is done, then I must write down two points here. What's your role? Or what's your role? First, you must be aware of then the same role you have to explain to the end user who is working as a general ledger accountant. First, he must know how to pass the document. In a setting. Okay. Second, okay. how to post a complete document. What does it mean by complete document? Any idea? Sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, being requested for 25,000 as an amount, but you know, management, management may inform them, like you know, why 25,000? Do you stay in some normal hotel with some executive's room? Hmm? Okay, no need to, you know, spend too much of amount on this trip. Why? Because we are not going to get more profit from that specific client or customer to whom you are proceeding for this particular business need. Right. So, as a petty cashier, what he did, the amount what he has recorded, I mean what he has parked in document is 25,000. The moment when I say complete document, that means you are authorized to edit this amount. If you ask 25,000, yes, you can release only 15,000. That we hope. Okay? I hope it is clear. So these are two important points which must be there in your mind if you are dealing with parking of document. Clear? Or any confusion here? Yes, anybody? Till this point, any confusion? Uh, is it uh, a complete document even if 25k is authorized? Yes. yes. All right. Uh, yes. See, I'm there are two things. There are two things. If you, you know, permit him, that's okay. If you are taking charge on yourself, then also, see, finance guys is known for cutoffs, right? How can I trust him that he is, he is asking 25,000? Is it a genuine figure what he is asking? The ticketing, hoteling, food, transportation, local transportation. It costs him more than, you know, not more than 15,000 per day. And it's only a 24 hour trip along with the meetings and all. Should I trust him for 25,000? And you know the employees, whatever you pay, you won't give it back to the management, correct? So, no matter whether I am authorized or, you know, I am providing an approval or nothing like that. The only matter of fact here, matter of point here is the amount what you are trying to approve. I am not talking about a debit and credit. Of course, debit, expense, credit, mode of payment is 100% correct entry. I am not concerned about the entry. I am concerned here about the amount. And the other side of the coin is sometimes, if maybe he is asking 25 and he is not aware that you know, maybe it goes beyond that. 
so it it goes beyond that like let's take an example he picked up 25 and when the trip that, that business trip is finished he comes back and he, he has kept the voucher for 30000 right the extra 5000 he paid from his pocket are you getting me so in both the reasons you are editing an amount see here you you can not only edit the amount but you can edit your branch but you can edit the explanation so called narration or text of the document got it still any confusion uh, i'm clear oh okay. oh okay, fine let me proceed and the other short here is you know the other circumstances if you are authorized then also you are you have to you know step back with some transaction why what's that the second feature is known as held document or hold document held or hold both are same held document now what's it for it is this type of transaction is for external purpose remember this what's it this is used for external purpose and here no authorization required Though you are authorized, but still you are unable to, you know, decide whether to post or not to post. What makes him to stop? See, here the document is like whenever debit and credit is uncertain. Do you any? Do you have an example for this? What I said is debit and credit is uncertain. That means I paid an amount of five thousand. Okay, let's take an example. I paid an amount for office expenses, five thousand. Are you sure that it is exact five thousand? I hand over this five thousand as a cash to my clerk to purchase some stationery for office use. How are you so sure that you know this is going to be a fixed five thousand expense? Are you sure? No. It may be four thousand. It may be three thousand four hundred. Okay, bill. Then fifteen hundred cash will be back to the company. Okay. Now it may be five thousand one hundred or five thousand one fifty. So here, what's happening? Debit and credit is uncertain. Okay. Oh, now your mind is in confusion level sometimes. Why? Because. Oh, here also we are keeping a document if I without saving it, and in hold document also we are keeping a document aside. So both are same. No, it may, it, it's an interview question. You know, sometimes your client may ask you that, what's the difference between parking and holding a document? So is it same? So he may confuse you. He he may play some tricks to check your genuinity. in both the cases what's happening here at first attempt you are parking a document what i told you is parking will not affect no effect on report got it whereas posting means a document which affects your report got it got it so here if you park temporary yes you may decide to delete that document are you getting later you may decide to delete this document why because the trip the you know the business trip got cancelled you still keep this document in parking no you have to clear this right so parking will not affect your financial reports but posting is so here also holding will not affect your reports but posting of this holding document or held document will affect your financial reports this is the difference between both the features are you getting me there's any confusion no, no confusion yes no confusion now here also you have to be aware of roles what's your role what you have to explain to your end user about this while he is working as a general ledger accountant in a city he must know 
how to held a document. Okay, how to held a document. Now, whatever may be the document, if this is the reason, we must know how to held a document. Then at second level, either he can post or he can delete this document. Basically, this is a completion. I'm sorry, I'm not using the same lines again and again. That's the reason I'm keeping something, you know, different so that you can put this point in front of your client or interviewer in a way that you are explaining. See, your answer should not be in a theoretical form, but in practical form. Then only they will appreciate your answers. Correct? Now, why I kept delete option here? Why I kept delete option here? You have hand over this amount to the clerk and client said that, you know, I'm unable to purchase today. You get back that amount. Maybe this requirement is fulfilled day before, day after, tomorrow. So would you like to keep that amount here? No. This is one reason. This is not only one example. But see, sometimes may happen. I may forget my wallet. Okay. I need some instant cash. So what I'll do, I'll go to petty cash here and I'll borrow a few bucks. Like, you know, boss, I need some thousand or five hundred. Okay, well, because I need some petrol or fuel expenses or my da daily expenses. Okay. So, what I have committed him that, you know, this two thousand or five thousand, whatever I'm picking up from a petty cash counter, I have, you know, committed to pay back tomorrow. So, what he'll do? He will post that document and show it into the books of records, books of business. Do you think that he, he is going to do that? No. So he will temporarily keep that document as on hold. When I pay back him, he will simply delete that document. Is it clear or not? Now, if you play smart, I will play smart. If you took 5000 from me and I have a petty cashier and I kept that document on hold, or tomorrow if, if I ask you, boss, where is my 5000 if you are committed to pay it back, play it. So what do you say? You may say, like, you know, most of the blacks, Lejo, you are aware of them, right? These Somalians and all, what they'll do? They used to take the amount, and Africans, they are working as the brokers in customs to clear those custom jobs and all. They used to pick up some $100, $200 from the office and they'll straightforward say that, oh, which amount, what amount? I have never taken such kind of amount. So, in that case, what you can do? What are you going to do as an accountant? Let me know. Let's take answer from Rajiv. Um, I'm not sure what should be done on this. Uh, you'll ask for a record or a while before you give them. He said that he uh, signed on a voucher. He straightforward yeah. said that you're not accepting it's my signature. Okay, his salary is in your hands. Just cut off his salary. Yeah. Make that adjustment in his personal account. That's it. Okay, you know how they bluff the management. They know how they bluff the you know accounting departments. So this is what happens. Not only with them. That's what I have seen in UAE. Uh, those guys. You know? But everywhere. It's Hello. Yes. These are those processes. As a general ledger accountant, he is in a confusion mind, like you know whether to post or not to post it. What to do in this case? Now he has to accept, right? So whatever may be the case, I gave you two options here: how to hold, how to post or delete. Here also, how to park or how to complete document. In both the cases, you can edit the amount. Huh? You can edit the amount, you can edit the branch, or you can edit your text, what you have written in that document. Why? Because if the document is in first stage, changes are allowed. Okay? If document is in first stage of the road. In case of parking also it is same. Here also changes allowed. But if in second stage, forget the changes. You can only change the text. You are unable to change the amount, the account, the company code. No changes. I'll let you know when we go for postings, then I'll let you know all these points. 
So these two circumstances are clear, then I'll proceed further. Is any confusion there still now? Sir, I have one question, sir. On SAP, we are not deleting any entry, you know, only reversing uh, is there, no, sir. Here the point is, after posting, before posting. Got it? Okay. You are only authorized, see, this delete is before posting, not after posting. Of course, after posting, you are not allowed to delete the document in a sense. Once a document is posted, you have to reverse that document rather than deleting it. But this is on hold, right? This is on hold. See, you as an accountant have written something on a piece of paper, rough paper, and kept in your pocket. Some calculations. Some calculations in the sense you paid 1,000 rupees, 2,000 rupees, 3,000 rupees to three guys. That comes to 6,000 or 6,500 overall. And you have kept that cheat in your pocket. Two by two cheat. Is it a official document? It's a temporary document. Or I don't. You are not from you know that specific uh, department. Have you ever seen temporary vouchers? Temp vouchers. Is anybody here? I have seen some temp vouchers. I hope Lejo has seen. Why? Because this is a regular practice in international country. Yes, sir. Temp voucher mean a voucher which is signed yes whenever you are paying an amount and you are not sure that's just like a holding of document now that may or may not be five thousand so what you can do if he comes back with thousand and he has got four thousand as a bill that means what's an exact voucher which you have to prepare again the final voucher is prepared for four thousand and the settlement is done a thousand rupees is back in your pocket is it correct so, this is before posting, not after posting. Clear answer. Clear, sir. Yeah. Now, next. The other side. As a general ledger accountant, they have to deal with some, you know, uh, recurring entries as well, recurring documents. This is also a feature of a system. Recurring document or recurring entries. This recurring document is also known as reference document. Okay, remember this. Recurring document is also known as reference document. What do you mean by recurring? Which comes again and again in a cycle. But here, when you are dealing with this recurring document, in SAP, when you are using recurring document, it must fulfill this rule, what I am writing up here. Whenever amount is fixed and date is scheduled for payment, these nurture of documents, you can use it here. May I have a few examples? Is anybody? Those general entries, those transactions must fulfill the line what I have kept in front of you here. I'm sorry, I'm not using any theoretical stuff. This is what a practical stuff to which you can understand how to. Okay. Yes. Any examples in your mind? Uh, loan schedule. Exactly. Correct. Any other examples? Okay, let me write down a few examples here. Mm -hmm. Who's this? Uh, may I know your name? Shabir? Yeah. Is it? Shabir. Have you ever checked your 12 month salary? Is that your salary is same in all months? Yes. How much have you got No, 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 it's not possible. It's not possible. Acha, Jan may be 43, February may be 43. Hmm? Have you overtime make here? Have you ever worked overtime? Have yeah, you taken yeah. off? Sometimes. Sometimes yeah, in the yeah. sense you yourself yeah, yeah. has accepted that it is not same as 12 months. Yeah. Okay. Soch, thoda soch na. 
think first, then deliver the answer. Okay, fine. Let me write down a few examples here. Rent, insurance, okay, and interest. Any questions in mind? Still, I'm giving you a time to raise your queries. Here the condition is, you know, at least these expenses are fixed for an year. You agree? For one year, these things are fixed. Correct? See, rent. Decided to pay 20,000 for a flat or 25,000 for a flat. Every month on 5th, I have decided to pay. Why I have used a word? Is it fixed? No. Schedule in the sense, yes, that schedule can be moved ahead. Like on fifth, it has, you know, I mean, committed to pay, but sometimes six, sometimes eight, and sometimes on ten. Correct? So here, these three are the best examples which is fit in a recurring document. Now, what happens here to deal with a recurring document or such kind of transactions? Uh, most of the MNCs, what I have seen, they used to go for, uh, you know, three level process to complete this document. What I suggest personally is, this is how you have to deal. Example, rent of one month is paid in another month, correct? Suppose, rent of January is paid in the month of February. I repeat, rent of January paid in the month of February. Now, you are preparing a PNL account for the month of January. Will you include that rent in January or February? This is my question, not a tongue twist. January, January itself. January itself. But what about the payment? You are not paying it, right? So how are you going to record a document in January and how are you going to report that expense in the month of February? So what will be the nature of two lines what you are going to record in the form of debit and credit? And I know the solution first for the month of January. System will create a cruel entry, sorry for not paying job. Mm. I'll come to accrual later, huh? Mundo is the answer here. Yes. First okay. answer this. Uh, rent expense debit to uh, rent payable. Okay. Got it. Rent expense got debited to rent payable or instead of rent payable, I'm, I'm just creating one shot as expense payable. Correct? Outstanding yes. pay. Yeah, accept that. Yes. Always make sure that only one liability account rather than creating rent payable, salary payable, all payable, payable, unnecessary disturb the balance sheet, right? So that's the reason you keep one liability. That's better. Okay. Now, what's next then? What will be the entry in February? Expenses. Mali expenses and the debit just off, huh? Why again you need to debit the expense? Already your debit is done here and your PNL account got affected with this. Then? Uh, outstanding expenses to bank. Correct. See, this is your expense, correct? What's this? This is your expense. And this is your liability. What you are paying is your liability, not expense again, correct? That is the reason. Outstanding expenses payable is debited. I'm sorry, some spelling left and right. Okay. Due to this, you know, keyboard stuff. Uh, I'm using a bank as credit huh? if I'm paying through bank. Got it? Now, what happens here is you must record this. This is recorded huh? as a recurring document and updated every month. Updated every month. Now, whenever you are dealing this, you go for manual payment. You got it? When you are paying this, you go for manual payment. But as far as these type of entries is concerned, here I kept only three as an example. Is that only three in nature? In live environment? No. There may be 40, there may be 50. Such nature of expenses, which is, you know, 
done on a cement but paid in an extra. Is it clear or not? So, when these kind of, you know, expenses occur, okay, so you have to record this as a recurring document, then update in every month. As far as the payment is concerned, you have to pay manually. Is it clear or not? Now, coming to MNCs, how they will do this job? I need one more paper. To give you this. What I have suggested is only two steps, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me take this. It will be very easy for you guys to understand. Let's talk about roles, then I will proceed for an instance. Now, what will be your role to understand this? You must know how to record these type of documents. How to record recurring documents. How many? As per the requirement. Okay. The next periodic processing. Periodic processing is nothing but month end. Every month end month and update. You have to update, right? This is just a record, temporarily stored in a system. So your job is to call these type of entries, whether it is 10 or 50, all recordings is done here and kept aside as a reference document. So by using that reference document, you have to use this periodic processing. There are some transaction code, there are certain screens. Huh? By using that, you can update all these in one shot. So, what it supports to the end user? See, end user uh, you don't have to spend, you know, additional time to keep in mind that, okay, I have posted one, two, three, four, and I have to post ten more. No. So, rather than, you know, utilizing some extra time, what he can do, he can simply record all those transactions, all those expenses which are recurring in nature in this record. And every time, whenever month end is done, every month end you have to record this. Like in January, you have recorded rent, right? So that it has calculated in PL account. What other guys will do, you know, they'll simply escape this rent account from here and then simply record in the month of February. That means your expenses which belongs to January you have recorded in the month of February. Do you think your PL account is correct? No. Okay. So here the third point is payment. What I have suggested you to go for manual payment. So these three steps, right? But as far as the MNCs are concerned, the most of the live environment, what companies will do, you know, they will record this. Okay. All recording is done at initial stages. Month end process, what they will do, you know, in periodic processing, they will record this first. Like rent got debited. Good. If it is individual account, see there are two strategies. Like Lejo said, rent payable, service payable, interest payable, insurance payable. All those payable, payable, payable goes to 40 and 50 payable. So if you don't want to maintain that, that much of ledgers, then what you can simply maintain is like outstanding expense, payable account. This is just a short activity. If you have one account, that's enough. Okay. Now, they have taken the step one is they have run periodic process. Okay. Very next month, what they will do, you know, on 1st of February, they will reverse this document. Reverse this document. That means your outstanding is debited, your rent is credited. Now, again, whenever they are paying these expenses, like on 5th, what they will do? They will call rent account as debit, then again bank as credit. Now which one is good? This or this? Both are okay. It's on client interest. Now 
why this activity is required to prepare PNLS, nothing else. Now you people are in a confusion type. How to decide which one is correct? What I did is in two steps. What they did is in three steps. Now the effect is same. Now which one you choose? Everybody is from experience background. Please come up and share your opinions or views on it. It's not like, you know, whatever Anwar says is correct. No. This is not going to work out in live environment. Yes. Any questions or any opinions on this? Yes, Ledger. Unable to decide. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how the reverse uh, thing works really. Like I'm not used to it. I've not come across it as well. I will show you. Don't worry. I'm here. I'm sitting here yeah. to show you both the cases. Don't worry. So that tomorrow if you come across with these two patients, you must know how to prescribe them a medicine. And it should not like that you are a practicing doctor, you got a patient and you are referring, I'm referring you to a senior doctor called Anwar. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Shabir, Malia, Rajesh. What's your decision on it? I will decide. Same result if you select this or this. But yeah. this is an additional activity. I don't know why they are using this. See, when they are using it, na, this is known as accrual and deferral reversal. Okay, accrual and deferral reversal. Okay, this is a kind of reversal. That means on a particular date you can reverse that document, not before, not after. I'll come to that point also. Is it clear? So all these three rows belongs to the recurring document. Is it clear now? The use of recurring document, you know, it's also known as reference document. Oh, let me proceed. Mm -hmm. For the fourth level, another feature which has provided by SAP is known as you know sample document, and this is also required. Sample document is also known as reference document. Now your mind will be in confusion. Right? This is also a reference document. Huh? How come recurring document is also a reference document and sample document is also a reference document? How come? In parking also you are keeping a document aside and holding also you are keeping a document aside. But how both are different? Here also both are different. What makes them different? I'll show you. Here, it's a template huh? designed to record more than one line at all. Mostly this supports the compound entry. Huh? You know what compound entry is all about. Is it? Is it clear? It's a template, means sometimes the nature of entry comes up in compound level, like three or four debits, one credit. Likewise, in an accounting department, you may have some, you know, 10 to 15 documents, 10 to 15 entries, which you don't want to type again and again every month. So what you can do, you can simply create a template template means you know you can keep it aside and whenever you want that you can bring it back you change the amount you change the date and you save it that means again and again you don't have to go for debits and credits example I'm writing up here salary yes compulsory wages compulsory electricity bill compulsory telephone bill compulsory conveyance compulsory okay now to mode of payment whether I can use bank or cash now, what is this? This is a template. Now, this is a template which I have prepared in the month of January. Is it going to be same every time? That's what I asked the question to Mr. Shabir. Is that values are going to same? Is that electricity bill and no. telephone bill is no. going to same? No. 
so that what i just said is you can prepare a template with some normal figures here i have prepared a template of salaries with five lakhs so it doesn't mean that in the month of february the same five lakhs is there the march same five lakhs is there no so sap has come up with this feature called sample document where you can record such kind of template to save your accountant's time what he can save and how he can save the template will be same references document will be posted with a different date and different amount don't you think that it saves time yes of course got it so the difference between recurring and sample as a reference document is any answers yes will you please figure out the difference i think it's very easy for you what is the difference both look same both are reference documents what's the difference then uh, the items change in re recurring document whereas uh, in sample document uh, it's usually the same uh, accounts in the in recurring document it is like fixed uh, items in uh, sample document like uh, variable yeah. variable thing this is correct the amount here it is fixed the amount here it is changed it's a matter of amount and of course it's a matter of accounts also i mean the ledger for you are using it. but the main point here is amount is fixed is that amount is fixed here no this is the difference and both are references this is how they play some tricks to the candidates to identify whether they are really a consultant or not so i have to say it so here the role again what the role here yeah, role comes up with two points again what is that how to record sample document how and how to complete the thing got it right? how to record sample document right then next how to complete sample document got it these are two rules why i have written roles here because these are all end user activities which you have to explain to your end users and of course you have to implement you have to test it before you leave your client to go live in production server okay now all these are the jobs all these are the roles and responsibilities of general ledger accountant now is it same as what we have discussed in this box yes is it same what we have discussed in day to day box no it's completely different correct so this box is their day to day role so our first task is to implement this okay then you have to go for parking holding recurring sample now of course the one stuff which is left behind to complete this explanation is mistakes so how you are going to deal with the mistakes any idea is that a finance department is you know error free department no right lot of mistake there is a reason audit that is two two types of audit one is internal another one is external okay internal is okay fine how guy is that who can handle that but external audit no you'll get some beautiful uh, you know compliments from external auditors who comes up to examine your accounts i hope you can understand this so how to deal with the mistake reverse reverse okay now basically there are two most common reversal type which is used and practiced in sap one is individual reverse what's individual reverse A reversal of one document reversal of one document means reversal of one entry another one is mass document mass reversal where you can reverse bulk documents got it now there are two more accrual or deferral reversal what we have discussed in reference document here accrual or deferral reversal means on a particular day not before not after okay and it's not a regular practice remember this now the fourth one is the reversal of reversal document that means you have posted document number 1 that is rent account got debited okay rent account got credited
got credit. Uh, all of a sudden you have seen that this entry is wrong. What you did? You have reversed this document number 1 with document number 2 as bank as debit and rent as credit. Okay, rent as credit. Now again very next moment you have find out that you know that the, the, the document number was correct. Document number 1 was correct. Now it is not possible to reverse this to 2. That means reversal of reversal is not possible. Possible but not with the same entry. Huh? Remember this and it is not good also. And this is not going to be a live practice or regular practice for those guys who are working in this department. What happens? If you are trying to rectify this mistake with document number 2, if document number 2 with document number 3, okay, see, you can reverse document 1 with 2, 2 with 3, okay, now 3 is reversed with 4, 4 is reversed with 5, like that, but it is not possible to go back, is it clear now, that is the meaning of reversal of reversal, that means very soon employee will get reversed to unemployment. I hope that's correct. Is it clear? Yes. So that's all about your general ledger departmental explanation. How, How do you work? What the kind of partial rent? Sir? Sorry. A uh, partial rent or advance paid rent? Uh, how, how we deal with that? Just a simple general entry. It's up. Just a simple general entry. You don't have to go for you know this recurring document at all. Partial payment yes. is just for one month or two months, right? It's not a regular practice. You ask any owner that I'll pay partial rent this yes, year sir. and partial rent next year. Who, who will be ready to keep okay. you? No, right? No worry. No. But that's one or two entries. That you can open up any general entry and you can post that transaction. Okay, if it is a prepaid okay. rent, okay, you go for prepaid rent transaction. If it is a prepaid rent salary, then you can go for prepaid. Is that every employee? Getting prepaid salary? No. Is that everybody is getting advances? No. You have no. to think from complete angle, not one or two transactions. Okay, you are working with the world's biggest technology and you have to think globally. And it is not like one client. If, if you are thinking that one client is having only electricity bill and telephone bill, which is under 5000, is that Every electricity bill, every telephone bill which is received by the corporate is same. No, right? Depends. Depends on it. If it's one or two transactions, you can simply post the channel entry and you can close that issue. Yes, I'm done with GL department explanation today. If any questions or queries, you are free to raise your queries. And tomorrow, we are going to start with this. Let's Okay. If time permits, then we'll go for posting the reports. Yes, any questions? I'm clear. Okay. Yes, Rajesh, Malia, Swaroop, Hari. I am a bit confused about this parking document and hold document, sir. So we need those tools, I am a bit confused. Let's see that parking document. Okay, you see that in practical. Don't worry. Let me show you the practical, okay. how it works. Okay. What makes you okay. confused? May I know that point? What makes you confused in these two? No, parking document. And holding document, both will park in, uh, both are same, right? So we'll park in today one place. <laughs> See, after explaining the point, also you are on the same conclusion, huh? How? It, it is same. <laughs> this is what happened. Catherine, yes. uh, uh, Swaroop, uh, you are here? See, after explaining clearly, now that. still that mine is not ready to accept that these both look like same. I have clearly mentioned, the in both the cases what happening, uh, this is not going to affect the reports at first attempt. When you park a document, this is temporary. When you hold a document, this is temporary. 
but look at the authorization here in parking you need authorization but in holding see are you not authorized to post a 5000 document yes i am authorized but though you are authorized will you post this document without proof bill is 4000 since you have holded a document for 5000 you are going to post the same amount your voucher yeah. physical voucher shows 4000 and your entry shows 5000 what you are going to answer your auditor then you and clerk both are close friends <laughs> no sir no <laughs> uh, this is one transaction huh? we don't know how many expenses in day to day life yeah. so we can easily <laughs> identify that how <laughs> that clerk is roaming on uh, roaming on royal enfield well anyway jokes apart this is what happens uh, in all financial departments nothing to worry about but when you are implementing a technology that you must make sure that what if they come across with these cases whether SAP supports them to control this yes of course how they can control you have to train your users okay what if the matter is in this side what if that matter belongs to the other side of the point I have explained you both the points right when it comes to practical okay we'll see some more when the screen is open then I'll show you how to play with that screen also. don't worry when I, I kept you here right reversal of reversal what I said is not possible then I'll show you that also don't worry but you should not supposed to use that if something happens in that client or that you know <laughs> matter I'm not responsible for that see a product when it is set for external use it must be for external use only if somebody thinking that you know let's have a spoon of shampoo and let's test it how it tastes like if something happens that company is not responsible honestly speaking so that's not a regular practice what I just said when reversal of reversal is not possible not possible it should not be a regular practice and it is not permitted in accounting department okay it's just like a check you have prepared and that goes wrong you have cancelled that check and you prepared another check at the moment you prepared the second check you realize the first one was correct you cancelled the second one now is it possible to use the check number one what you have cancelled now you are going to prepare check number 3, check number 4 how many checks you are going to cancel and then be ready to cancel your employment why because management is going to take a selfie from your side eh? why because they haven't seen such employees well anyway I am done for today's uh, departmental explanation for general lecture if any questions you are free huh? please before I close this call any questions no sir very clear for much. No. No. Fine then. Thanks, sir. So, Lejo and Shabir? Uh, I'm, I'm clear uh, regarding this topic. Okay. okay. Now I'm talking about like you, whether you will be proceeding with this uh, team or what? You have to decide. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm happy with the current team. I just need the videos for the prior lessons, which I've missed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you'll you get it. Don't worry about that. Hey, Shabir, what's your decision? Can I decide to get it? You are going with this path Yes, sir. Fine, not a problem. Why? Because, see, I'll you guys who are sitting video. along with you, Yes, 6.5 years experience, yes, 4.5 years experience. Some are from aviation industry, some are from Accenture and all, right? So, all guys, except only one guy, I think. Okay. Uh, other people who are sitting with you guys are having 4 years, 5 years, 6.5 or 7 years of experience also. Okay. So, it's good to sit with the team so that you'll get multiple exposure in discussion. So, I hope today's discussion was up to the mark and it's quite clear okay catch you tomorrow and uh, those videos which are you know in my inbox I'll send you the same Lejo and Kapit you just go through it one by one and it is not like you know you can sit for a day and you can complete everything you go through it if you have any query you can you know discuss it no. uh, all right okay all right okay. Thank you, sir.
Yes. That's all for today. Hope Thank you enjoyed today's discussion. See you tomorrow at the same time. Bye for now. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Uh, please share your email IDs like uh, Shapir and Lejo and uh, you ask that management to add you guys into WhatsApp group huh? and don't forget uh, to share yeah. your email IDs. Yeah, so they have today's added Today's recording. Added mm -hmm. already? Okay. Today's discussion I'm going to add in your email. Okay. By today evening or within two hours you'll get this converted file in the form of media. Just go through it if you have any queries. Put all those queries before we start tomorrow's discussion. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. Bye. Sir. Uh, sir. Yeah. Sir. Yes, yes. Sir, yes. when you are going to start new new classes? No idea. No time as of now. Okay. Actually, uh, Saturday I have given uh, this demo classes, eh? so that's the reason only I'm I'm asking. So my friends are interested yes. to join your class. Yes. So that's okay, really fine. I, I I'll talk to you on this. Don't worry. Okay, I, I'll talk to you on this. But the okay, uh, starting yesterday's discussion, Lejo and Shabir was there, and they are here. Okay. Okay. I'll catch you okay. tomorrow. I'll, I'll I'll drop you a text. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. See you sure. tomorrow. Time. Bye. Bye. Bye.